Okay, so I have got the uh, scope apart and have started looking into things and I have found the area with the voltage divider, which is this area of resistors here. I will point with my probe. Uh, this is uh, where the voltage dividers are, starting with R891, starting here, going here, then 890, which goes here to here, and then 89, and so on and so forth. So that's the voltage divider network. And this resistor, which is right here, see from here to here, it's going to get approximately half a meg, which is about what I expect. From here to here, a little bit less because you know, you're going from here to here. And, but when I go from here to here, which is the one resistor right here, 890, I have an open. So it's R890 is open. And so now <laughs> I need to go into the manual and figure out how to get this board out because it is on the bottom and secured. Um, you can see I've already taken one screw out, but, and it's secured, but there are lots of things that plug into it from the bottom and lots of special little cables and connectors all around here. So I need to take that apart, um, open it up, and then I'm just, like I said, gonna replace everything in that divider chain so once I get the divider chain replaced, everything should be good. I'll see which kind these really are. I had done some probing and found that yes, and that was done in the earlier uh, video, and found that the one divider resistor is in fact open. And as you see here, I have another resistor tacked on the bottom of the board. And this is kind of a temporary fix because I didn't have the right value. It is a 520K resistor that is open and I only had a 560. Um, but it works. Um, control has to be a little bit more to uh, the ex more to the extreme uh, position to focus but it does work um, when I do place an order with mouse or digi key I will order the right resistor and get it put in but temporarily this works and it seems to work pretty well so what I'm going to do is put all of it back together there's a whole bunch of screws and then I will put it back in its spot turn it on and let you see it through the new camera that I have installed that is set to just look at the test equipment that is on the other side of the workbench to look at screens and such. So you will see that. It will not look quite as good as the video that you're seeing through here because this camera that you're looking through now is a high-res 3CCD imaging, uh, medical imaging camera that is being recorded in component. The secondary camera is a single CCD camera that is being recorded through a composite because it does not have a component output, but it will work and get the point across. Later on, it may get upgraded to one of the three CCD cameras, but that will be the new addition to the workbench that you will see. All right, here you see the output of my signal generator. 
Uh, this is through the new secondary camera. Now, what you have here is the LF or low frequency output because the first output is RF output, which goes to one gigahertz. And as you see, that is turned off. But what I have is a one volt peak to peak, one kilohertz sine wave set up on the low frequency output. And it is connected directly to the oscilloscope. All right, even though the furnace is running, I will uh, shoot this. Uh, you are looking right now at the screen of the oscilloscope, the one kilohertz signal at one volt peak to peak. As you see, looks pretty good. A little bit noisy, but that's the nature of this beast. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's the repair of a Tektronix 2232 digital storage oscilloscope.